Welcome back everyone! In today's video I will show you how I made the first piece for my Bregenzerwald Tracht, the Unterhock or Buddhist Petticoat. This video is part of my What My Ancestors Wore series, where I recreate costumes my genetical ancestors may have worn. This time I'm attempting to recreate the Bregenzerwald Tracht that's origins go way back to the 15th century. If you want to know more about this Tracht, I go more in depth in this video. And do you remember that in this video I mentioned how colorful and varied Germany and even Bavaria within it in terms of regional costumes, because I just have to emphasize that statement again. As going deeper into the historic Bavaria, Vorarlberg, the state within state, still holds an incredible amount of diversity in terms of originality and the age of traditional costumes. Costumes from almost every style period are worn here, starting with the oldest traditional costume in the Alpine region, the Bregenzerwald costume, via the Baroque-inspired Montafon costume, and the city costume costumes from the Biedermeier period, where every bigger city has its own variant, plus an everyday version and a festive version, right through the renewed traditional costumes. But I'm not gonna go any deeper into this this time, I mean, leave a comment if you want a full video on that, but we're here to make a petticoat. Interestingly, I haven't found a lot of sources on this piece of clothing other than a mansion and a couple of extant garments from this museum. According to the museum, the petticoat was made from loden, that super dense and warm wool. So perhaps it was used as a protective layer in the winter. From what I can see, it seems to me that the petticoat is way too beautifully decorated to be not seen by anyone at all. While the bodice is obviously made from some reused cotton, which leads me to believe that maybe this bodice petticoat was worn around the house with something on top of it, like a shirt or some kind of bodice. Who knows? In any case, the moment I came across this garment, I was like, I'd wear this. So I'm gonna make the petticoat as close to the original as I can, but I'm gonna shape the bodice part to be more everyday wearable, to my own taste. Let's get started. As such, this petticoat suddenly graduated to be a summer dress, so I decided to skip on the heavy wool loden fabric and instead I used 2 meters of black and half a meter of red clothing linen. I started by cutting my black fabric into two 70 cm wide strips that I attached at the salvage edge to form one 3 meter long rectangle. Then I cut my red fabric into two 20 cm wide strips that I also joined on the shorter side and pasted them onto the bottom edge of the black fabric on the top and the bottom. I did this so during the embroidery process the red won't shift away or bunch up all weirdly. For the design of the embroidery I had to seek other sources than these extant garments as the pictures on the museum's website aren't high quality enough to see the details of the embroidery on it. So I had to use a couple of modern Brig and Servat costumes as inspiration and created my own design. I decided that I will try and sort of quilt the red tar angles onto the black base instead of painstakingly sewing them on by hand. We'll see if it works. <laughs> Once that was ready, I hooped my fabric and set on to embroidering all 3 meters of it.
When one piece was ready, I moved the hoop down, carefully aligning it with the masking tape I put on to mark where the next pattern should begin. Also, I only realized way too late that the fabric wasn't cut straight in the store. So my strip ended up tapering so small that some of the triangles lost their point. It was very annoying and disappointing, but hopefully, once assembled, the fullness of the skirt will hide this mistake. Anyway, here's your reminder to always make sure that the fabric's edge was cut straight before you use it. Once all the embroidery was done, I removed the stabilizer and the basting stitches that held the fabrics together. Then I cut the excess red fabric as close to the embroidered edges as I could, using a smaller sharper scissor for the inner corners. I used an old basic top pattern I made previously for another dress to cut out the bodice pieces. I made this pattern by draping the fabric onto my dummy and transferring the shape onto paper. I marked the darts and sewed them shut. Then I closed all the remaining seams too, leaving the left side seam open for the zipper. I used bias tape to finish the arm size, sewing it right sides together by machine, ironing it inwards and felling it down by hand on the interior. To figure out how I want to make the bodice, I pinned the skirt onto my dummy and took a picture of it. Then I sketch over the picture. I decided on a square neckline, as reference to the jupe, with a red trim along it. At this point, I didn't have much of the red fabric left, so my only option was to make it into one long bias tape that I will use to finish and decorate the neckline. I cut 4cm wide strips, joined them and with the help of my bias tape maker and my iron, I made one long strip of bias tape. Then I tried on the dress, marked a new neckline and cut. I sewed the newly made bias tape, this time right sides on the wrong side of the bodice with machine. At the corners I sewed 45 degree angles onto the tape.
Then I flipped it out and with the help of a lot of steaming, I gently persuaded it to lay flat even around the curves. Then I felt the bottom edge of the tape down by hand. To match this extant example that has a bit of black underneath the red triangles, I marked 1.5 cm away and folded the hem up along that line. I wanted to hand baste this edge to the part where the red fabric would cover, but in its current state it didn't reach, so I added a bias tape to the hem. Then I fell down the lower edge of the bias tape by hand, carefully, so it would not show from the other side. I ran two parallel basting stitches on the top of the skirt panel and tugging on the bobbin thread I gathered them. Then I pinned and sewed the skirt to the bodice and searched all the interior edges. I also searched the side seam I left open for the zipper all the way down to the hem. The last step was to sew the zipper in and closing up all the remaining side seams of the skirt, carefully matching the pattern so everything would line up. From the 1560s onwards, a head covering was mandatory when leaving the house and the Brigantzer women complied, pairing their majestic outfits with eye-catching and extravagant headgear. But there are rules. Not every hat can be worn with every color of jupe and not to every occasion. For example, the Spitzkappe, made of felt and adorned with tiny pearls, can only be worn with black bodice jupe and only for going to church on Sundays or special holidays. But the Brahmanka, the winter headgear, inspired by Russian fashions, made of dyed silver, can be worn on any public occasions. There is also a fulfur version that can be only worn with the brown jupe and can be worn either for church or public occasions. In the summer, the Brahman cup is changed for the shield, a black straw hat for public events. For the transitional period between summer and winter, the Kaufman hat is worn. It was named after classicist painter Angelica Kaufman, who spent her youth in Bregenzerwald. With the white shop, the schlapp, a cap made of white ribbons is worn for any occasions. Other headgear one can wear with the white jupe is the chapale, a golden tinsel crown. It used to be a sign of virginity and today is still only worn by unmarried women. The crown may only be worn for church celebrations or for one's own wedding. The other significant specialist headgear is the stuho, which is a white scarf tied around the hair. It signifies grieving and it can be only worn with the black bodice black jupe. As summer is already upon us, I decided to go with the Shio hood. I got a black straw hat of Fitz Marketplace that shape was surprisingly pretty close to the museum pieces I saw. I only had to make the brim a little bit smaller by unpicking some stitches and cutting it off where it seemed right. And with that, this outfit is ready.